I feel like as the years have gone on and I've grown up, obviously, I started this YouTube channel in 2011. It is now 10 years later. That's gross. 10 years later. And back when I started making videos, I guess I had like a real arrogance. <laughs> now that I look back, I'm like, I, I must have had like an arrogance or a self-confidence in myself that has dissipated <laughs> over time where I just felt like what I had to say was really important. <laughs> or that people needed to hear it. Or, I don't know, I don't know. Or that it was just so important to me that I had to share it. I honestly can't tell you what was going through my mind when I was making those videos. Not to say that I regret making those videos, but I just don't have that same need to share every like lesson I've learned or every inner thought anymore. Which is why this feels alien. Like I've learned as I've gotten older to do this with my best friends or my boyfriend or my mum, you know what I mean? So yeah, doing this now feels, um, feels, what's the word? Doing this now makes me feel a little bit embarrassed, I guess. It makes me feel a bit like, ugh, am I, am I saying the right thing? Am I, does anyone give a sh like, is this pointless? I, you know what I mean? But at the same time, there's like a weird comfort to it because I have been doing this for 10 years. This still holds like a level of familiarity to it that whenever I do this, I do just kind of get back into the swing of being able to talk to a camera. Ah, oh, YouTube, you strange, strange beast. Basically, I thought it's been a very long time since I've, I've made a video and made a sit down chatting video the last time I made a video where it was literally just me sitting down and chatting about stuff was almost a year ago. I made a video called The Energy I'm Bringing Into 2021 and now it's almost 2022 and we've not really done this since. <laughs> I've done like bookish videos but I don't think that's the same thing. So I found out today that I'm actually nominated for two Grammys. Um... <laughs> So the Grammy nominations came out and obviously I wasn't paying attention and someone messaged me being like, hey, Cinderella's up for a Grammy. And I was like, that's really cool. Went online, looked at the, the list for musical theatre albums. And I was like, oh, Cinderella, that... They missed the stage concerts on there as well. So, and I was like fully like, I'm not nominated for two Grammys. That's like Android Webber, Camera Macintosh, I guess, or like... Schoenberg, who's really nominated for a, a, a Grammy when it's a musical theatre soundtrack, right? Is it the writer, like, or the composer? Is it the producer of the show? I don't know. It's not me. That was the impression that I was under. Cut to today, <laughs> my agent calling me up and being like, hey, so we just had an email from the Grammys saying that you are nominated as one of the lead vocalists on, on the albums. Um, they have confirmed that you are a nominee. So that blew my mind a little bit today. That was a real sort of pinch me moment. Cause I was like, yeah, it's cool to be like featured on two of the, two of the albums. Like just being featured on one is cool. But being featured on two is like, when's that ever gonna happen again in my lifetime? But I was like, I cannot claim that I am Grammy nominated because that's not how this works, right? Turns out it is how it works, <laughs> which is silly. That is silly. Um, so that was a nice realisation today. Chances are one of the other albums will win because Bridgerton is up for um, the same uh, category. Girl from the North Country is up as well and that's like a ridiculously beautiful soundtrack. I've always said a nomination is a win, a win is a bonus. So it's cool. It's like super, super pinch me moment. Really, really freaking cool. Something else cool that I did recently um, was sing at the Diana Award. It's a charity that is set up in the memory of Diana, the Princess of Wales, um, and her belief that young people can change the world. So there were 20 recipients of the award this year, all of whom are young people who have done extraordinary things. I sat there that night listening to these stories, and there was a girl who is 15 now but she was 13 at the beginning of the pandemic and she realized that in her community in Bangalore there were 
lots of people who didn't have shoes they were walking around barefoot um because they were unable to provide shoes for their for themselves and their families um so she managed to start a campaign and a charity called soul warriors um and managed to get 15,000 pairs of shoes donated to her community she was 13 she was 13 and i sat there like what have i done with my life that's just unreal that's extraordinary and you know that's the story that sticks in my mind but every single one of those 20 stories were just exceptional and unbelievable so it was a real honor to be able to sing at that um ceremony um and louise pendleton was there and i had no idea she texted me at the beginning of the ceremony just saying look right <laughs> i just looked to, to the side and i was like oh hey she was just like hello um so that was a nice surprise my joni collaboration i don't think i've talked about that in a video since um since i announced it i guess it's been so amazing and every now and again when i look out into the audience at cinderella i can't really see a huge amount of the audience partly because my eyes are crap but also partly because the lights just don't let me see that many people um but there there's a moment at the beginning of bad cinderella where i like lean out into the audience kind of like over the first row and the light kind of goes with me and and it reveals like the first maybe six rows and more often than not i can see a few people who are wearing pieces from my collection my joni collection and it's just super cool you all look amazing um thank you so much for getting excited about it with me um it, it's i loved it from the beginning phone calls or zoom calls that i had um with lucy over at joni um right the way through to its like conception and the clothes being in my hands or me wearing the clothes it was just amazing and i hope i get to do something like that again soon because i loved it so much and you guys were all very wonderful about it as well and you all look great so there's that something else i should probably tell you about is that i recorded four audiobooks this year one was party shoes um which is in the shoes collection by noel sretfield like ballet shoes theater shoes tennis shoes all that lovely stuff um a very sweet book um so that is out there on audible for you to find the lucky escape by laura jane williams i have done her previous two novels as well which were our stop and the love square so this is the third time i got to do one of her audiobooks so thanks for continuing to ask me i'm very honored um to keep doing your audiobooks laura then i did on a night like this by lindsay kelk um which was such a great book i enjoyed it so much i loved reading it just as a book in my head um but then i loved reading it out loud and getting to do all the voices and the characters it was just such a fun outrageous feel good story so i really really enjoyed doing that audiobook and then the final one was a kids book called little echo by al rodin and i just it was so much fun i've never done a kids book like that before and i just loved it um and there was a point where they were like okay we've got on our list here that we need you to do bear sounds i was like hmm <laughs> I thought I was just reading the words. I've got to do the sound effects. Okay, all right. So there's a lot of, of me pretending to be a bear. Um, a lot of me pretending to be Little Echo, like the main character, um, and doing like cute little like sweet creature voices. Um, so I highly recommend, even if you are an adult, you go and listen to that because you will get a kick out of me snarling away like a bear i'm sure so if you would like to listen to any of those i will put the links to the audiobooks below um they were all great books and really fun to do the readings for speaking of books with this kiss is out on april the 14th 2022 and waterstones are holding a pre-order competition where if you pre-order the book or if you have already pre-ordered the book you are automatically entered into a competition to win a waterstones gift card worth 100 pounds that you will spend in a book shopping trip with me we will go book shopping together and then you, me and a friend of yours will go for afternoon tea straight afterwards. So if that sounds up your street, then I will put the link to that below. Um, all you need to do is pre-order the book and it's any edition of the book. They are all eligible. And by any edition, what I mean is there's like the normal hardback, which is just the normal hardback copy of the book. But then there are signed 
hardbacks and those signed hardbacks are also the Waterstones exclusive that have sprayed and stenciled edges so they will be blue and have like little stars in them they are so pretty saying that I've not seen one in the flesh yet I've just seen pictures on water zones of them but they're gonna be pretty I know it so if that sounds like something that you would like to pre-order again I will put the link below and all you got to do is click it it's so simple there's also another writing project that I've been working on that I finished the first draft of maybe about two weeks ago and it was a wonderful moment finishing that first draft because so much has been going on in my life at Cinderella in general. <laughs> it's been a lot. The last few months have been a lot. That's why I've been relatively quiet on YouTube. Yeah, getting that book done in amongst it all is, it, it, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. So finally writing the words the end and being able to send off the first draft to my editor was quite a moment. It was a moment. I am in my pajamas, by the way. Shameless. Completely shameless. And I guess the final thing that I need to update you on is the fact that I'm going to Lapland this week. I am on holiday from Cinderella from Wednesday to Monday. And so I've taken an opportunity to actually go away somewhere and go away somewhere that isn't Disney. As I said, I've not been very well recently. Um, so I was off the show this week because I was, I had just a vicious cold that like wiped me out. I took that opportunity to go through a lot of the, in fact, all of the letters that I've been sent to the theater um, over the last few months since we opened Cinderella. Um, and I was going through them and replying to them and it just reminded me of when I was at the beginning of my YouTube life um, 10 years ago and I opened a PO box at Channel Flip. Does anyone remember Channel Flip? That was uh, my, channel what were they called channel partner no what were they called it's been so long that i can't remember now but they were like agents essentially for youtubers they had like dan and phil emma blackery uh charlie is so cool like i think they had a bunch of us and they would get us brand deals and and sponsorships and and look after our google adsense and stuff like that but they let me use their offices um which just happened to be on great pulteney street which was behind les mis um so they let me use their offices as a p.o box and so every week i used to go there and pick up posts and i used to sit and go through it all and um it's just been a long time since then and it still sort of blows my mind that people are still following me and are still connecting with the stuff that I put out there enough to actually sit down and handwrite me letters. Um, so I just wanted to say a massive thank you um, because I, I still find it unbelievable that that's a thing and that I've been making videos for 10 years and that there are people who have stuck around for all of those 10 years um, and that there are people who are discovering me to this day because of YouTube. Um, it's, it's wild. And amazing and uh, a little bit scary but also really wonderful um, so thank you it means the world and um, thank you I don't think I have any other way of saying thank you other than thank you um, my vocabulary is kind of letting me down because I don't think I have enough words or I don't think I know the right words or how to put the words I have in the right configuration to explain how I feel about it. Um, so I'm just gonna say thanks and hope that you feel the love through the screen. Um, and on that note, I'm gonna go um, because I'm gonna go download series four of The Handmaid's Tale on Oliver's Amazon Prime. Shh.